tee off at the Point Grey Golf Course and meet the legendary Stan Leonard. If any local golfer deserves to be in the BC Sports Hall of Fame, it's Stan Leonard. Born in 1915 with a 9-iron in his hand, Stan blazed a trail for several generations of Canada's pro golfers. His first major victory was the Northwest Open in 1931 at age 16. Eight times he was a Canadian PGA champion, nine times on our Canada Cup teams, and in 1959 he was the World Golfer of the Year, voted by the New York Writers. Just before World War II, Stan Leonard, at the age of 40, became a rookie on the tough PGA Tour. He went on to play in 10 Masters alongside other legends of the game. Considering all of the other things you could have done, ending up golfing as a job was not a bad decision. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> if I'd have had to try to make a living any other way other than golf, I think I'd have been a complete failure. Um, I feel very fortunate that I chose golf. Golf was very, very good to me. And uh, hopefully I've put something back into the game and um, here I am. All along, I only had one thing in mind, and that was to become a professional. I might hold the record, by the way, for playing hooky from high school in order to get from high school to the golf course so I could practice my golf and also caddy. You won your first tournament at the age of 16. Did you miss out on just growing up being a teenager? Well, I don't think in those days the things were not quite as lush as they are today, but you had to make a lot of sacrifices. There's no question that we used to play golf until it was dark, and I used to get up in the early morning before I went to work to go practice. I'm talking about as an amateur. You know, when you're out in the practice fairway at 5 o'clock in the morning, and then you try to do a day's work, and then you go back down there to practice at night. It's, it's no piece of cake. You turned pro in 1938? I was offered a job to be the assistant golf professional at the Hastings Park Golf Club in 1938. And uh, that, to me, was, uh, was the way I wanted to go. I knew you had, to, in those days, you had to become an assistant before you could yeah. become a professional. And then from there, of course, you just start to look at the bright lights and say, boy, I want to go out and play. So uh, this is what I did. I started to play, play tournament golf, maybe six or seven tournaments in the winter months. And uh, then from there, in about 55, it became a steady. In 1958, you won the Tournament of Champions in Las Vegas. That, that was a huge win. Well, of course, that had to be the all-time great because in those days, when you were playing for first prize money of $10,000, that was big bucks. Big bucks. And uh, I had the good fortune to win that. What do you remember of your first Masters tournament? Well, I remember the first tournament. I remember the little old locker room, and I, uh, I think I had the good fortune to hang my jacket or my coat on the same peg that Ben Hogan did. And that, to me, was enough. I mean, right then and there, I said, boy, I've arrived. By this list right here, it says here, 1960, you were a TV star. You were doing golfing tips on CBC television. Yes. Well, I um, recall in 1960, we ran a series here. We, um, Ted Reynolds was the host. At the golf swing. And uh, we ran a series of about 12 shows. Went right on through the gamut, and uh, I think it was uh, reasonably well accepted in those days. After you left the uh, circuit and uh, many years of playing on the, the tourney, what did you do with your time away from all that? Well, after that, I uh, sort of took up fishing and looked after things around the house and so on. Uh, then I got the offer of a job in Palm Springs, and I took that job in 1973. 74, I took that job. I went down as the director of golf of this um, exclusive private golf club in the Palm Desert area. And uh, I stayed on as the director of golf and head professional for 10 years. And I took retirement, but I am still on the teaching staff at Desert Island Country Club. What a tough so life. So it's not too bad. What a tough life. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the Prince of Pasta, Umberto Mengi. Restaurateur, entrepreneur, cookbook author, TV cooking show host, he's a guy who used his noodle, literally. In 1967, Umberto arrived in Montreal from London. A couple of years later, he headed out west to rescue us from life in the culinary doldrums. With skills honed in his mother's kitchen at home in northern Italy, he took the lowly noodle, pasta, peasant food, and made it fashionable, fit for the dinner tables of the bourgeoisie. I was born and raised in Florence, 
and uh, I went to school there, and I did uh, one half semester of uh, seminary. I was uh, supposed to be uh, become a priest. Um, Is that your idea? I uh, no, it wasn't. This was all family arrangements. Um, an Italian family, I think, they have something on the back of their minds. Their kids to someone should give some uh, of uh, their times to uh, to the church and they chosen me and they didn't they were not successful no how did you get out of florence you can call a runaway i stole a bicycle and i put myself into the road towards the country until i got tired and angry and then i found a little spot in uh, trattoria small family italian uh, run restaurants uh, sort of uh, mom and papa, and uh, they sort of took me in as one of their sons, and uh, I was working in the kitchen, I was cleaning the floors, and I was doing dishes, and so then I spent the summer there, and uh, it gave me a sort of uh, sense of uh, uh, self-accomplishment. Uh, I was doing something on my own, and they were paying me very little, but I was making my own money, and that's, uh, from there on, I, I start to like the rest of the business itself, so I started to like what I was doing. You were in Montreal for Expo, and then you decided to come to Vancouver. Why? Well, Vancouver was the west. It was the frontier. I, I was in love with cowboys, and, I, and uh, when we were watching movies, it was the most popular movies. It was the west. There was the horses and the people with a cowboy hat. <laughs> and, uh, and the beautiful, colorful Indians, and uh, all the land, and those rolling hills, and lakes, and rivers, and trees. So it was quite intriguing, and uh, it was it was another dream that I had, and I have to come through. I had my own um, idea about restaurants, especially Italian restaurants. I wanted to serve something that was much finer than uh, meat sauce and tomato sauces that were served at that time. I wanted to give something more towards the mama cooking, because when I say mama, I say fresh ingredients, uh, same fresh herbs, I'm talking about the simplicity. So that's what I wanted to give. And, uh, and there was a space for it, because nobody was doing it. And I felt that it, uh, our clients, our customers, uh, the consumer was ready for it. So I did, I started with, in 1973, with. Uh, my little restaurant's called Umberto's, the original, the Yellow House. When in your life do you think you were the happiest? I was happy when I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> um, I don't know, you, uh, again, uh, um, I, I don't know if I'm happy or ever been happy because you never stop. I have not stopped, so I've, um, I've had, uh, uh, right now I'm the most satisfied. I mean, I've, achieved, I've had a lot of success satisfactions doing what I'm doing so um, maybe if I said I'm happy now the way I am or what I've done then maybe I will I will stop but I know that I'm not stopping so maybe I'm not happy <laughs> and Umberto continues to expand his restaurant empire a little bit every day did you know Lynn that Stan Leonard won 44 tournaments and he played in 12 masters oh I guess that's why he's one of the greats mm -hmm. we'll be